You may not realize this while living your coddled existence within the asylum of the Western world. Every day is a struggle for survival whether you realize it or not. Some people are clinging within an inch of their life, some people have a mile. Regardless, the only thing that separates you from your mortality is a matter of time. Within this understanding, SHTF is not something that's going to be demarcated by a big event. The battle is here and the battle is now. Just like many athletes will tell you that it's not about the actual event, whether it be a boxing match or a track and field event, which is the challenge. It's the actual training that is the challenge. So it's in the preparation where the majority of the blood, sweat and tears are poured into so that when the main event comes, you are so conditioned that your ability to respond accordingly is second nature. One of the most fundamental virtues that's going to dictate whether or not you survive, the quality of your survival, and how far you are going to be able to take your visions and aspirations is patience. Patience is described as the quality of being patient, as the bearing of provocation, annoyance, misfortune, of pain, without complaint, loss of temper, irritation, or the like. Just like the gray man strategy that foregoes the desires of the flesh and foregoes the prestige and accolades that come with showing off, he waits silently in the shadows while the tactical badass exhausts himself, burns himself out, depletes his energy, reveals all his secrets, and squanders all that he's accumulated in a brazen and proud but feeble expression of his greatest human weakness, and that is the myopic inability to see things long term. The tactical grunt who's on the front lines only sees the imminent threat in front of him. Unlike the general, and as the word denotes, he does not have a general understanding of the battlefield. Patience and survival go hand in hand. Just like a lion or any member of the feline family lies in wait in order to tackle its prey. Not only is patience important for acute survival, but it's also the fundamental ingredient to thriving both before SHTF and after. The majority of problems that you're going to face in your life can either be avoided or mitigated with patience. Life is a game of chess. It's all about seeing many, many moves ahead. It's like a sniper who lies in wait and waits and waits and outweights his opponent and is able to strike down as soon as his opponent reveals himself. Just like the brazen idiot who's trying to show off, who's trying to push you around, is acting like a dumbass, the longer you can wait them out and not be victim of your emotions. Not react, but respond only when necessary and counter strike after they lunge at you, whether that's physically or intellectually. Let them burn themselves out. There are so many ways that patience relates to emergency preparedness. For example, security, surveillance, scouting, defending, being the gray man, being on the counter offensive, or in the case of trying to scavenge or procure food, hunting, fishing, and just wait just a little bit longer for that opportunity to present itself. And you see that movement through the trees finally emerge after hours and hours of waiting in a tree stand. You finally see something, your senses activate. If you can wait out, just like water erodes stone over millions of years and carves out valleys, in most cases, if you can outweigh your opponent, you will prevail. It's been my experience in the wilderness that when I am most patient, in the sense that I'm not even expecting anything good to come out of what I'm doing, when I have very few expectations, that's when things work out. That's when you find your destination, that's when you're able to find the food, and that's when things just seem to come together. There's a YouTube channel called Rewild University and Kenton has a saying, he says that if you have to do something in a hurry, slow down. Almost every time without fail, when you try to rush something in a panic anxious state, bad things are going to happen. Don't go from place to place looking for the kill, wait. Rationing resources is going to be one of the things that most Westerners struggle with most in the face of adversity because we've been so conditioned 
to have things instantly, whenever we want it. There's a characteristic present in people in the modern world which doesn't exist in the tribal world. And it's a hasty anxiety, a rushing towards making more and more progress at any expense. And this is the cost of living out of balance with nature. It's a ticket we've all purchased, so now we have to enjoy the ride. But if society is broken down into its rudiments and you are forced to exist in a more primal way, living in a balance with your immediate surroundings, which are going to be what you rely on for nourishment, will be what makes or breaks your ability to survive long term. The teching out mindset of keeping up with the Joneses and doing the mad dash to the finish line to meet all of the societal expectations which have been foisted upon us by the complicated culture that we weave is going to be highly counterproductive if and when the technological grid ever fails us. So having to delay gratification not only because resources are scarce, but having the discipline to ration the resources that you actually have that you could gluttonously consume all at once is going to take patience that not a lot of people have. Building shelters, finding the right place to build a shelter, not just settling on the first site you see because it's the most convenient. Maybe you have to bushwhack another kilometer or two to find the ideal location. Maybe building a temporary shelter like I've seen a Joe Robinet do before, before making your main shelter. You know, a couple days later, taking some time to get to know the environment before you lay anchor. It's just like that one quote that says in life, don't worry if you shoot too high and miss. Worry if you shoot too low and hit. Because that's a great way to achieve far less and reap far less than what you're capable of doing. In terms of root finding, taking the time to look at the landscape to read the map, to note the landmarks, so that you can effectively navigate the environment and not go in circles 50 times wasting energy. The amount of energy that you're going to waste making hasty decisions, frantically trying to get things done, making mistakes, rushing, grunting, groaning, begrudging the environment that you are trying to master may well be what leads to your early demise. Most of the people I see on YouTube who do bushcraft, one of the things that I envy about most of them, and this is, you know, Survival Lily, Joe Robinet, I can tell that those people are comfortable in the wilderness. Personally, I'm not there yet. I'm not at a point where I've achieved a certain level of patience, and it's because I'm constantly grinding. I'm constantly trying to get things done and maximize the use of my time but I know that when it counts I'm going to be able to sit still because that's what it's going to take whether it's hiding out from somebody who is pursuing you your ability to sit still and cultivate strength maintain the element of surprise maintain the element of stealth look if your opponent is far superior than you as Sun Tzu would advise Never try to confront an opponent who is far superior than you. You're asking to be taken out. So if you don't like the system, don't throw Molotov cocktails at it like an idiot. Become the system. The only way you are going to exact the change that you see in the world is to inject some of your DNA into the system. And you do that bringing whatever integrity you can maintain with you as you work your way to establishing some measure of success and power within that paradigm, then and only then can your virtues and your morals start to be reflected in that society. Patience, the gray man philosophy, is not only fundamental for survival, but it's fundamental for thriving. In everyday life, not just prepping, patience in all your endeavors can mean the difference between days, weeks, years, decades of your life wasted on battles that never needed to be fought in the first place. For example, if you were trying to diet, if you were trying to lose weight, be patient enough to allow the nutrients that are in the good food to make you feel good enough so that you don't crave the instantaneous rush of refined sugars. In business, 
in investing, make decisions on the basis of a five-year plan. The problem with Bitcoin greed and why a lot of people lost a lot of money is because people were trying to get rich quick when the safest way to invest is to invest in the long game. Things such as the stock market, real estate, or whatever business enterprise you embark upon. Whether this is in your relationships, shoot high and miss. Don't shoot low and hit. Many people will drift into certain relationships out of fear of being alone when they know deep down that that is not the relationship for them to be in. And in the long run, they suffer for it. Wait. Wait for the person who you want to be with 100% and don't accept anything less. If you just wait, you will find it. I used to do a lot of hiking in the mountains and there was this comprehensive guidebook called Scrambles in the Canadian Rockies, which I would strongly recommend if you're ever planning on wanting to do any sort of mountain climbing in the Canadian Rocky Mountains. But in this book, there would always be directions. And the trails to hike a lot of these mountains are very poorly defined. So when it's trying to give you directions, in addition to a really cheesy map that doesn't really give you much detail, it's going off the basis of landmarks. So it'll say something like, go up to the poplar stand past the big rock, and you'll see many cairns pointing you in the right direction. Well, almost every time I did one of these hikes, I would always second guess myself and there's many times I just turned around because I didn't know I was going in the right direction. Because I never proceeded long enough and far enough. If I would have just waited and kept going, I would have reached the poplar stand and the rocks and the cairns and all the rest. But I didn't sometimes. Sometimes I turned around. Once I figured that out, I kept going and I always found my destination. There's an idea with climbing a mountain that once you think you're halfway up the mountain, you're really only like 10% of the way. Because when you're climbing a mountain, you can't really see the top. But anyways, I digress. In terms of managing your emotions, patience, be the last one. If somebody is beacon off at you in their car and there's some road rage going on, let them go and be an idiot. If you want to have a good time, go watch on YouTube, Instant Karma Fails. It'll make you feel a lot better. Nine times out of ten, if you can keep your cool and not act like a jackass like they are doing, you will come out the victor and they'll go home feeling like crap. Make a conscious effort to be the last person to speak. Try to absorb all of the information about whoever, your friends, enemies, frenemies, whoever they happen to be. Let them talk first. Be the one that nobody really notices. If you are in a situation where you feel very small, you feel very insignificant, let other people exhaust themselves and burn themselves out. Save your potential and when the moment's right, unleash. I'm not saying try to be meek, try to make yourself insignificant, but if that's the way the energy is flowing at any given time, let it be that way. Roll with it. Don't resist it and forcefully go against the grain of whatever sociometry is happening in the moment. Let it happen. You will have your time to shine. Don't worry. In terms of choosing a career, don't abruptly rush into something just because you want a job. Yes, it's important to make money, but do something that you're going to want to do, that you're going to love to do. It's not only about money. And remember that the place that you enter into that line of work. If you are ambitious and you work hard, it's not gonna be the place that you exit. Like Sun Tzu says, let your plans be dark and impenetrable as night. And when you move, when you finally decide to make your move, fall like a thunderbolt and strike with a vengeance. I added a bit to that quote for dramatic effect. But if there's one thing I'm learning in life, it's that if you think about the long game, if you are patient, if you can not act on your impulses, if you can keep your emotions in check just a little, little bit longer, if you can keep your fear under control just a little bit longer, you are going to transcend to a new level. Don't be afraid to keep going. When things come down to the wire and there are people around you who are looking to you for guidance, be an example. 
control their anxiety by controlling your anxiety. If they see you standing with fortitude, not making any rash decisions, they are going to be more at ease and they are going to function better. I hope you found this video useful today. Please like, comment, subscribe if you enjoy the video. Check out this playlist about the psychology of survival. You may find some things interesting in there. Thanks for watching Canadian Prepper Up. The best way to support this YouTube channel is to support yourself by gearing up through CanadianPreparedness.com or BugOutRoll.ca. Premium quality gear at the best possible price using the incredibly secure and easy to use Shopify platform. We offer free shipping to the United States for orders over $200 USD and free shipping to Canada over $75. So support the channel by supporting yourself.